アンソニーとしても知られているザ・スーパービーダン得意はポケモンモダン格闘ゲームそしてパッツルゲーム彼はプラトフォーマのイエスマイケルとしても知られているザ・ミラクル得意は JRPG と古典的格闘ゲームと予想彼は最強のオタクだナシラオンナビオスタートスノー Hey guys, so I'm here to review Lost Dimension for the PS3.、Uh, this game was developed by Atlas. It came out a few weeks ago. It's been really under the radar, and not a lot of people even know this game even came out. I happen to be following this game for quite some time, especially when they announced it last year that it'd be coming to PS3 in the US.、Um, I was really excited about it because Atlas makes really interesting. Kind of, you know, avant garde RPGs like to call them. They usually try to think outside the box with a lot of their ideas for the game. So let's just jump right into our review for Lost Dimension. Alright, guys, so now we're going to talk about the story for Lost Dimension. Now, the overall story for this game is that the world in the not so distant future is attacked by this guy called The End. And of course, his name being ironic, he wants to bring the end of the world. And so, the United Nations, after he destroys a big chunk of the world, like he destroys a lot of, like, a lot of countries and nations in the world, and there's only a couple of them left, and there's not a lot of population of people left in the world. So, United Nations come up with this plan to get all of these, like, you know, talented psychics. Together and form this organization called Sealed in order to combat this guy called the end. And so he creates this huge tower where you have to go and pretty much go to the very top floor and try to stop him. So, yeah, that's the story. It seems really basic, extremely cliche. I mean, it's, it's, it's brimming with anime tropes, but I think that the story is supposed to be simple on purpose. At least that's what I'm thinking. That's what the Thing is, I think that's what they're trying to like get across because then I think the main point of the game will maybe be the relationships between the characters and the interactions with them versus the actual storyline that they're in. That's what I'm gonna hope. That's my hope. Yeah, I'm gonna be optimistic about that because if that's just what if their real、um, aim and goal was to drive a really thorough story, then they really failed. But I'm gonna give the benefit of the doubt and say that this game is more about the character development more so than the actual storyline. Alright, so now we're gonna talk about gameplay and mechanics. Now, one of the major features of this game that was, I guess, advertised the most was the whole、um, mechanic of trying to figure out who the traitor was, which is a part of the game. And this whole feature is like、uh, randomly generated. So there's no real way to like figure out who the traitor is through like some strategy guy or something. Every instance you play this game, there'll be a different traitor for each portion of the game, which is nice because it makes you have to still and think and you know have to like kind of sift through information and stuff like that. And there's various ways to figure out who the traitor is.、Um, you get these little instances called visions that come in after each battle, and he hears voices in his head, the main character show, and they pretty much are the inner thoughts of the characters that's playing with you in that particular battle. And he gets to hear them, and he gets like these little small fragments. Figments of like the traitor, you know, exposing his、um, his or hers、uh, inner feelings about, okay, I'm the traitor, and blah, 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 and things like that. And so after every battle, you're able to see, okay, how many voices do I hear? Do I hear three voices this time? Do I hear two? You have to do a process of elimination to figure out whose voice matches which character. And then you're actually given this one ability called Deep Vision, which is pretty much his way of using his telepathy to go inside of people's mind and figure out their true motives. You're not given too many of these. You can only do this four times, as I've seen. And you have to be really selective and strategic about how you use these deep visions. Because after you use them, you can't use it again. And you're stuck with the characters that you know aren't the traitor. So I think it's a really good feature. I think the game is really intriguing when it comes to that portion of it.、Um, as far as the actual like, combat, the combat is pretty simple. I didn't really find too much, like, 
I didn't find the combat to be extremely engaging. I did find it to be very functional though. Like the parts of the game didn't frustrate me. Battles didn't take too long. It didn't take too long to get around the map because this is a tactical RPG. Um, I did enjoy that the battles didn't take extremely long periods of time. Um, there's not a lot of like, I guess you can say complexity to the battle. It's pretty straightforward. It doesn't take a lot of time to really get and understand what's going on. Um, I think more so the game that takes a little bit more time and get to know is the prepping for the battles, which is, you know, your armor, um, getting new weapons, things like that. And of course they have this like kind of like skill tree, which is a little, I guess I wouldn't say complex, but it does take a little time to get used to it. Um, you're able to get points after every level up and you put points toward, of course, each skill you want. Certain skills take more points than others and certain skills take more requirements. Some skills require you to have three different skills maxed to a certain level before you can get to the other one. And then certain skills require you to have a specific item that you get. This item is usually an item you get after someone's been sacrificed, after you find out you propose them to be the traitor in the game. So there are a lot of layers to the prepping for the battle, but the actual battle as it stands is pretty simple, um, a little uneventful sometimes. I mean, the attacks don't even look that great. They're really basic looking. Um, yeah, I think the combat in this game could have been a lot better actually, especially the presentation. I feel like a lot of the attacks look really generic and boring. They just pull these out like any old RPG they've ever seen before. There's not a lot of imagination involved when it comes to the combat for this game. So we're gonna talk about the audio visual for the game. Visually, this game is, well, I can say there's good parts and there are bad parts. The good parts about the game are the, um, the illustrations and the concept art, I guess, the 2D um, sprites for every character that you see in the game. Those are really well drawn, of course, because Atlas has really amazing artists on their team. Now, when it comes to actual 3D models, those get kind of like, I guess, boring looking and not very interesting. Um, some of the characters don't translate well into 3D. I would say the 3D models don't look as great as the 2D sprites do. Um, yeah, the game looks kind of washed out as far as like all of the textures and the, um, the corridors and the textures and the, the dungeons and just like everything about the game looks kind of like washed out and very old and a lot of stuff looks outdated. Like this is using very, very old um, assets from other games or something that they had or stuff they probably didn't use from like, I don't know maybe Persona or something, but yeah, the 2D sprites look really great and the artwork's really nice. The sound quality as far as like the attacks is concerned sounds really good. The music is amazing. I mean, Atlas, they never disappoint when it comes to music. Like they have some of the most talented people making their music because they come with such a variety of different genres inside their soundtracks. Unlike most RPGs who have the same orchestral sounds or stuff like that, they try to go think outside the box and give you some different like the techno, you know, some, drum and bass, you know, things like that. They try to like spice it up a little bit, give you a little more variety when it comes to music and concern. Um, but yeah, the music is great. The sound effects sound pretty good. Visually, this game is kind of drab. Um, I wish they would have done something else. I mean, I understand this game is kind of old, I would say. Yeah, it's from the last gen, but even some last gen games look really incredible. And this game just doesn't even look like it even should be on the Vita. I think this game could be on the PSP, honestly. Alright, so in conclusion, I think this game is pretty good. Um, I did find the whole clue aspect, I would call it, trying to figure out who the traitor is to be the most interesting part of the game and probably the most captivating part. Um, the actual combat and, you know, doing that as far as fighting in the dungeon and stuff, it's kind of, it gets kind of boring after a while because there's not that much excitement that goes on these battles. These battles are really dry looking. Like, of course, I know they're using guns and... You know, guns don't always have to be, you know, flashy, but I think they could have done something a little bit more interesting with the combat. The combat just seems kind of like a throwaway. This honestly could have been a visual novel game exclusively without the combat part, and it's probably would still have been a very competent game in itself. Um, and for that, I will give this game a B minus. Um, I think that the concept of the finding the traitor to be very interesting in the way they've done it. Um, I enjoyed the music. 
I did like the interaction with the characters. Like, the voice acting is really great. Like, that's another thing I didn't touch on. It's really good voice acting for this game, too. Um, and I like the way the characters interact with each other and I like their banter and the way the dialogue was written. It's really well done. Um, story could have been a lot better, too. But I would give it a solid B- minus for this game. And that's my review for Lost Dimension. Tell me what you think. Uh, do you like the game? Do you have even heard about this game? Do you hate it? Um, let me know. Um, comment. Please subscribe to our channel. You can check us out on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Rushdown Radio for more reviews and information about video games and whatnot. And let us know what you think. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.